Hello everybody, welcome back to Los Santos, a place we have been to for the better part of nine years. I know, it's very infuriating. And nothing makes me more infuriated than some of the cars that we have gotten in those nine years. Because they really are awful, at least a few of them. Which is why, a few years ago, I think in 2018, I did a little video to find out the worst car in the world, all things considered, and this was my choice. It was expensive, it was made by a prestigious manufacturer, and it was terrible in every single measurable way. I'm talking about, of course, the Pegasi Tesseract. The all-electric supercar that couldn't handle very well, couldn't stop very well, looked rather hideous, and didn't have a very high top speed and cost over 1.7 million. It meets all of the criteria, however, now there are a whole host of new vehicles that I argue have gotten even worse. Which means it's time to go back and redo this to figure out what is the worst car in the world, all things considered. And let's start out with the overpriced portion of this video. And this has always been the prime example, the Lynx. I really like the Lynx. It's a great handling car, it's a great sounding car, I like how it looks. There is but one single problem with it. It's incredibly slow in the sports category, and yet it's some, one of the most expensive sports cars in the category. Now, compared to something like this, it's a little... I mean, this thing is cheaper than that car, and yet it's faster. This is the Itali GTB from Progen. And this, while nothing crazy, is a far better deal than the Lynx. However, in all their eternal wisdom, somebody took this rather good car, I won't say it's a great car, but it is still fun. They took this rather good car and made it worse. You see, you could take it over to Benny's and turn it into the Italian GTB Custom. For just half a million dollars more, you could get a car that was slower or a lap, had less downforce, and had less grip. To be fair, the GTB Custom is not a bad handling car, and it does have quite a bit of customization. However, it's still half a million more for a vehicle that, at least on a lap, is significantly slower. Because it has less downforce. That's just ridiculous. And yet, amazingly, this massive waste of money relative to the original GTB is nothing compared to the other adventures. This is the fire truck. It can be found on pretty much any fire station or from 911, completely for free. And yet, if you go onto the website Warstock, you can buy it for $3 million, which means this must be how they treat their fan base. Enough said. This looks like a sports car. It sounds like a sports car. And yet it isn't, really. I mean, it is. It's in the sports class. But we're moving on to the next segment of this video. Misclassed vehicles. And this is a prime example. The Dinka Segoy. First off, I'm not a big fan of it, even if it was in the right class, like just a compact class. However, it's in the sports class, like everything else, apparently. And it's not really a sports car, it's pathetically slow relative to them. It can sort of slide around, but that's more due to the car's poor handling and not so much well-engineered fun. It's all in all just like the Italian, over-expensive, 1.5 million if not more. 
and it's not very quick. And it's in the wrong class. If it was in the compact class, it would be fun. Just like this. This, believe it or not, in its lifted estate vehicle glory, is not in the SUVs class. This too, the Benefactor Strider, is a sports car. <laughs> yes, the lifted estate car SUV that you're seen driving through the mud is a sports car. And to be honest, that's not even the biggest problem with this vehicle. The biggest problem with this vehicle is that it's boring. It costs almost a million dollars, so it is cheaper than a lot of other things. But there, there's just nothing to it. There's no customization. It can sort of go off-road. It's not bad. But it's not a great sports car. It's not a great SUV. It's not anything, really. It can't turn. It can't stop. It doesn't have very much acceleration or performance or anything. It's just a vehicle for the sake of making a vehicle. I mean, seriously, when is the last time you remembered the Strider as a vehicle in this game? Exactly. All of the cars I mentioned so far are indeed incredibly flawed. But that's not so much because of their driving style or their handling or anything like that. It's because of external factors related to their development. So... Let's move away from these cars, because clearly they're not going to be the worst of the worst. And move on to the ones that truly suck at their jobs. Like this, the Marauder. It looks very tough, it's got a machine gun on it that doesn't work. It's got machine guns on the front that do work, it looks like it has bulletproof everything, it's a massive monstrous armored vehicle ready for Afghanistan. And yet... Let's see just how tough it really is. Okay, shotgun to the windshield. And it's through already. Well, you're dead if you're in there. Okay, um... What about explosives? That's two sticky bombs, and... Okay, so it blew up on the first sticky bomb, and the second one was superlative. Well, that doesn't seem like a very tough armored vehicle, especially when you compare it for the same money, if not cheaper, you can get this. This is a masterpiece of an armored vehicle, the Night Shark. Look at it. It's also got machine guns on the front, and a whole host of armor plating. And, well, sure, the windows can still be broken in, it's a lot harder. Look at that, it barely even makes a dent in the metal plating. It's very difficult to see out of, but in a war zone, this is exactly what you want. And when you put a few sticky bombs on it, or in this case, three, not just the two that I did for the Marauder, well... Look at that. Barely even a scratch on it. I'm gonna bet you this not only drives, it still spits fire, because that's what this thing loves to do. It's a very fast vehicle, too. So, that, ignore that. Yes. Two sticky bombs, and it didn't even make a dent in this performance. But of course, the most important job of a car is to drive nicely. If you can't do that, it has fundamentally failed being a car. And well, I hate to say it, but this vehicle has done exactly that. For a very sad reason, because the Dinka Blistaconjo should be perfect. It's a front-wheel drive, lightweight hatchback from the 90s. It's perfect for track days and modifications. However, it is spoiled by one little thing that ruins it for me. Can you spot it? By right, turning it into a corner, normal amount of gas on the exit, and did you see it? No? Let me show you again. You see it now? The differential is open. Very open. As in, you could probably put another differential in it. It's awful. It's not necessarily bad, I mean, it doesn't really affect the handling that much, fundamentally, but trying to deploy any power, even in the dry conditions, much less in the wet, it's just impossible. 
and you, it just totally brings you on the experience because you're driving nicely, you turn in, it's very lovely, and then wheel spin, wheel spin, wheel spin, wheel spin, wheel spin. And it just is the most annoying thing in the world. It's a bit of an, a nitpick for sure. You can fix it with suspension, but I don't want to have this. I want this car to be perfect, and it's not. In fact, having an open differential is kind of infuriating, so you know, I'm not doing this anymore. It's awful. We're just going to test something else, okay? And that, the reason I walked out is because I was saving up my energy for this. One of the most terrifying cars ever made. And a class A VAMOOS! <laughs> I can't even start the intro without the thing trying to kill me. Some reason, somehow, somewhere, someone. Um, this car got messed up when it was launched. The suspension tuning, the handling tuning, the code for it was just broken in some fundamental way, which means trying to drive it it's a bit like trying to drive a fucking Bronco on cocaine. Ugh. Yeah, it just does that at random. It, it tries to kill you. That's a serious issue. Just going around any corner, any curve, you breathe on it, and it just tries to either spin you out or roll you over. Either way, you're going to end up in a tree. <laughs> It's the most, it's like you're floating. You don't have any control. There's about 10 to 15 degrees of play in this room before you do anything. It's just the worst thing I've ever driven. I really, uh, you turn a corner, you think you're fine, and then you're not, and then you get on the power. Whoa, my God. That was decidedly the end of the Vamoose test. And after I got some new underwear, we moved on. And that is because we have to talk about the nightmares now. The true terrors of GTA Online. The special vehicles like the Oppressor Mark II, the rocket-powered vehicles, and the flying vehicles. And nothing embodies those more than the Vigilante. You see, the Vigilante embodies everything here. It's rocket power, it's armor, and it's got a lot of rockets and machine guns on it, ready to kill anybody who the driver deems below him. It ruins this game, the people that drive these vehicles, and this is a perfect tool for those awful people. We're being polite when we say that. Even if you fly away, you might not be safe, because all you have to do in this vehicle anyway is to drive to the nearest hill, or incline, launch off of it, and then hit the boost. And look at that, now I'm a fighter plane, ready to shoot down anybody who I think looked at me funny. It's these vehicles that ruin the gameplay for everybody else. The people that drive them, the people that own them, they're awful. But I can't award them the worst car in the world because they're not normal vehicles, and I've made this challenge to talk about the worst normal cars in this universe. Vehicles that are too expensive, vehicles that are in the wrong class, vehicles that are fundamentally flawed in driving characteristics. Truth be told, all of these vehicles deserve the title of the worst car in the history of the world. Some of them, I think, deserve it more than others for their just sheer murderous intentions more terrible designs. But the true worst car in the world has to embody everything here. It has to be too expensive, not very good at its job, poor to drive, poor to look at, and is fundamentally flawed. And I think I finally got the answer for that. So ladies and gentlemen, I give you the pleasure. The worst vehicle in the history of the world, all things considered, volume two is... The Vapid Slam Truck. It's built off of the Slam Van. And apart from the fact this thing doesn't handle very well, and it's not very quick, there is one key problem with this vehicle, one that takes a bit of an explanation. Alright, so this is a tow truck. And over there, there is somebody who is clearly not a very good 
Parker. And they need to be towed. So I'm gonna get into my truck, which is marketed as a tow truck. It's got a tow hitch and everything. I back gently into it. It rolls up the ramp. And there you go. Now I just drive away, right? No, because this tow truck isn't functional. It can't do the one thing it's designed to do. So it's just for show. And it, as you can see, it's sort of rolling away as I talk. So when I you know, eventually put it back on, and try to drive away like this, for example. Well, it doesn't really work. Uh, it's a bit sliding with weight on the back, too. The handling is all wonky as well. Let's see how far we can go. We're not doing too... Oh, it's gone already. Yep. Okay. This vehicle doesn't work. It costs over 1.5 million. It's not very fast, it's not very good to drive, it doesn't do its job, and although it doesn't look like the worst thing in the world, the fact that it looks like a tow truck and can't be a tow truck sort of defeats the whole purpose. Which means it deserves a very special treat. It's the only thing it deserves, really. So I drove to the edge of a cliff, and if you can't tell what's about to happen, well, it's sort of obvious, but what I have here is I'm going to push it off of the cliff. Now I'm not going to be in it because I like my life and I really want this to die. And it should be perfectly fine in terms of height that it should be able to demolish this vehicle with ease. And we're going to push it off. I got some tech from DARPA over here. So if I just go and raise it up and... Bon voyage! You filthy animal. I didn't hear a boom. Did it? The bloody thing survived. Even in supposed death, it still makes me frustrated. Well, that's just tip that's just typical. Fine. Let's try that one on for size, will ya? There we go. Ugh, there we go. Alright. Well, I think that was some genuine consumer advice. Anyway. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and don't buy anything here.